A year ago in 2020, there were no treatment for COVID positive patients. Now we have the vaccines, which is a form of treatment in terms of prevention of the illness. And we have certain drugs that I've alluded to earlier, dexamethasone, um, remdesivir, um, they are the monoclonal antibodies. They all are very useful in managing, especially adult patients with, um, with COVID. Not all patients who are positive for COVID require admission. The need for admission is determined by the severity of the illness. And so we classify them in terms of the severity as asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe, or critical illness. And persons who are usually in the category of severe or critical illness are the ones who require admission. At times, persons who, or patients who have moderate illness may require admission, especially if they have underlying predisposing conditions that can cause them to deteriorate. The important thing is the safe transportation from the ER to the wards or to critical care unit. And how we do that, the wards or the unit that is going to receive the patients are forewarned and prepared before the patient arrives there, long before the patients arrive. The patient is given a mask to wear if the patient is able to. Some patients are um, on um, significant life support, for example, a ventilator, not usual, but if that is the case, there's no need for masks, they're in a ventilatory support. But a mask is given so that um, we control the source of the, any virus that may be, um, uh, that a person may, may exhale. The persons who accompany the patients, be it the nurse and the porter, they also use the appropriate PPE, meaning goggles, gloves, masks. And the nurse in particular will wear gongs because they often have to lift the patients. We do um, uh, the COVID testing and those persons coming for COVID testing, they come through one door by the old physiotherapy unit and they're tested there. They're not allowed to mix with the general population for the rest of the hospital. So what I'm saying is that we do have methods of trying to uh, prevent the mixing of patients if persons have a temperature or if persons have a, um, are feeling unwell, like flu-like illness, we advise them to go to the flu clinic. And again, that helps to prevent the possibility of a COVID positive patient being in, in contact with somebody who may come to ER for something totally unrelated. At present, we allow one visitor per patient per day in the medical surgical units. Similarly, in the pediatric unit, we allow one family member per day per patient. But of course, um, what is allowed, um, that person who visits for that patient can vary from day to day. In the um, maternity ward, we also allow one person per patient per day. The difference is that they must be tested, must be COVID tested and proven to be negative before they're allowed to visit because oftentimes those persons like to be part of the delivery process. So they must be tested. For the NICU also, they, they allow two persons per day now. Two persons per day per patient and they must be tested. Now, having said that, um, that is what happens right now. And we need to say to the public that should things worsen, there would be change in the policies. I remember last year, at one point in time, because of the significant um, uh, lockdown in the country, 
we did not allow any visit at that point in time. The corollary is also true. Once things improve, most of these restrictions will be relaxed. So it is not, it's not a, 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 a fixed protocol. It may change depending on the community, the level of community transmission that is there in the island at a point in time.